This is a faux leather jacket that I purchased at an op shop. The inner collar is crumbling and quite icky, so I've decided to cover it up and hopefully make it look new again. The fabric I'm using is 100% cotton and it has little flowers on it. I used paper to create the template for the collar. I roughly traced around the top edge of the collar and the sides and then estimated the lower edge, leaving a little bit extra when I cut out the initial template. I then lined up the top of the template with the collar and made folds in the paper to indicate where the bottom edge of the collar should be. After I was satisfied with the shape, I redrew the template onto another piece of paper. I added 2cm to the top of the collar, this way it can be folded over onto the other side. And I also added 1cm to each of the sides for seam allowance. I then added an additional 1-2cm to on the bottom edge for seam allowance also. My template wouldn't fit across my piece of fabric, so I instead cut it diagonally across what is known as the bias. It's called the bias because it stretches more than in the horizontal and vertical directions. When cutting out the fabric, I left a little bit extra on the bottom edge, just in case. I pinned together the top edge of the fabric to the outer edge of the collar, as I want this to wrap over the top edge of the collar on the outside. I sewed approximately 1cm away from the edge of the collar, though I was really just following the original seam line on the jacket collar. However, I sewed a little bit further down to hide the original stitching. Before covering up the inner collar, I tried to scrape off as much of the crumbling fake leather as I could. I then shook this whole jacket over the bin. I didn't want the new collar puckering at all, so I spent a decent amount of time pinning the fabric into place and adjusting it until I was happy. I was careful not to pin through to the outside of the leather, as I didn't want to damage it. On the bottom of the collar, I trimmed away the excess fabric so that I had about a centimeter extra. I then folded this excess under and pinned it into place. I didn't have a bluey green coloured thread to match the fabric, so instead I used the matching pink to make the stitching more of a feature. When I start with the needle and thread, I first push the needle through about a needle length away from where I want to begin. 
I leave a small tail hanging at the end, and then sew on the spot where I want to begin to make a little knot. I then pull the tail taut so that it's further out of the fabric than it wants to be, and then use the scissors to trim it off. The rest will disappear into the collar. When I finish with the thread I do a similar thing. I knot the thread on the end spot, and then I push the needle through the collar to another area, and then pull the thread taut and trim again. On the edges of the collar I used a whip stitch, which I sewed through the bottom of the fabric through to the top layer, and then repeated through the bottom layer to the top layer again. Along the bottom edge I used a wide back stitch, making sure to only sew through the original inner collar fabric and not sewing all the way through to the other side so that it was visible. I removed the pins from the centre of the collar, but decided to add a stabilising running stitch. This time, I decided to go fully through the front and the back of the collar, so that it's visible from the back as well. This was to add a little bit of extra detail on the back. Now the collar is complete, and it looks pretty good in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you later.